Now, uh, you couldn't hear me a minute ago. I, I hope you can hear me now. Thank you so much for those who have uh, reminded me that they can't hear me. I hope you can hear me now. Uh, uh, let me welcome Dibia Otwaja. You, can you hear me? <laughs> I can hear you now. Yes. You're you try to text me. You know. <laughs> yeah, you can you can me. But that's great. I can hear you now. Huh? It has been a challenge trying to get you guys in. I said, what is going on here? It happens. Yeah. It, technology, you technology. know. Technology. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know, but you got you have to flow with it. You have it to is what it is. You Absolutely. To, you look great, by the way. I love your you. outfit. Lord, I, have mercy. Thank you very much. I, I, you know what I said. You know, life is for living. You have. To, it's not just to inhale and exhale. You've got to let yeah. the world know that you're happy to be in here. <laughs> so you look let happy. me welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Let me welcome everyone to Cheerism Live. Uh, so today I give honors to the highest and my gratitude to our noble ancestors, Ahan Keoko Nyohan and Ne Ohan Gozi Onyohan, Dr. Nambi Azikiwe, Mrs. Fumilayo Ransom Kuti, Mbono Jike Oba Kenzwa Obinin for reenacting Africa's spiritual past into the spiritual collective trough named Cheerism. In Igbo, also known as Godianism in English. And I want to thank you for taking the time to be here. It is not always easy to leave what you're doing to come and sit and listen to conversations about anything. 
when your mind is racing about everything else. So thank you again for being here today. May this time that you have come to spend with us be meaningful to you. And may you live here spiritually enlightened, fulfilled, and may your curiosity be even greater when you came here. Day one. Your decision to be here today is because of your interest and your desire to level up. And that's what we plan to do with your time today. Last week, I started my presentation on the ontology of Chineke in African spiritual tradition, bearing in mind that my focus is on the Nkoro people of Igbo land and a sprinkle of other African spiritual tenets with universal application. It is always important for us to know that there is such a diversity in our world so that you take what you will and add to your repertoire. There is no exclusive truth. Let's get that straight. There is no exclusive truth. Just a lot of wisdom that you can add that can trail behind you as your badge of honor and your badge of respect in this case and reverence for the wisdom of our African ancestors. We share what we know and we live what we share. So before I even start my presentation, let me get a few uh, uh, um, how do from Dibya Yudi on your hand. Yudi, Biko Keletu and Biko Ka. Ah, who's on the laborist? Yeah, brief. You have a land of Karaka, Topoka, Mamma. Oh, go see, de. Go when you listen to lose your mind, hugging with that towel, more beyond money. Yes. Two balloon balloon, a big B, or four, Yagazier. He said, oh, I'm so happy See. to be here. I'm proud of everybody that has tuned in. I'm proud of those people that support us. I'm proud of you. And I'm proud of me for not giving up the fight. I'm proud of our ancestors. Ahai, Noha, Mbono GK, Kwame Nkrumah, Patrice Lumumba, Nambia Zizwe. All these people that you mentioned, people that you mentioned, people that we haven't mentioned, all of them. We are very happy and proud that these people came before us because without them, we will not be doing what we're doing right now. The work that we're doing is very important because the African mind needs to be emancipated, absolutely needs to be emancipated. And it's through this emancipation that we can be able to achieve greatness. A clouded mind results in a clouded future. If you have a clouded mind, you cannot chart a course that is going to be beneficial for the next generation. What we're trying to do in uh, on Chairs and Life is to chart a path yes. for the future generations, to give them food for thought, to give them understanding so that they can understand themselves, understand the contributions that they've made to civilized behavior. The African has always been great. When you read the history of mm -hmm. Africa, the mm -hmm. squint eyes of the colonizers, the Europeans, sometimes it seems like Africans were just by the wayside why civilization was going on. That is not true. We contributed just as, as much as any other human race to what the world is now. We mm -hmm. contributed in science, we contributed in mathematics, we contributed in philosophy. We contributed in spirituality, in religion. The African has always been capable of great things, capable of original thought. So yes. Don't think that we as Africans did not contribute anything to the conversation and as to what the world is like today. Because yeah. for the most part, what you see in the world today came from Africa. Yeah, we're gonna. We you you are going to you you have a lot of work to do today. To you, you did. You have a lot that you're going to have to share. <laughs> so hold on, that wonderful thought. Hold it, hold right. it, hold it, because I'm gonna be hitting you with it today. Thank you, and uh, let me welcome uh, Dibia Chiedozia. Welcome, 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 welcome. Uh, how are you? You're looking very distinguished. What's the occasion? As usual. <laughs> Yeah, we can't we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Raise your hand. Yeah, you. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Okay. We can thanks to thanks to Chineke for everything. Yes. Very great. Yes. Yeah. We're doing great in spite of all the daunting circumstances down here. 
I yeah, know. Great. <laughs> yeah. There's hope. Thank you. So. Good day, Will. Good yeah. day, Will. I, I catch you says, uh, Chijula, so happy you're all here. Yes, we are happy to all be here, and here is the other queen. Hey, Hello. Hello, Dr. Simona. How you doing? Oh, very well. It is nice good to see you. You, you look great. You. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you know, I, I would say, I say earlier, I was strong. You know, I had created a, a green screen that I wanted to use. Well, te technology be what it is, it just wasn't cooperating. I tried everything. So by the time I realized I'm not going to be able to use that green screen, it was five minutes to the time. So I'm scrambling, trying to come back downstairs. And oh, Anyway, here we are. Here we are. Is that a good? I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. And um, last week, uh, uh, we started the discussion of the ontology of, of uh, um, African spirituality. And it, it is so important to understand what the relevance of the ontology is. It is actually how we are trying to learn to understand our world by associating it with our being. To understand Chineke, we bring Chineke to where we can understand it best, and that's right where we are. Unlike some other religions that put Chineke away, our ancestors wanted to connect directly, and so they created this ontology. And we talked about it last, uh, last week, so I'm going to remove the rest of you so I can go back, uh, I can bring in my PowerPoint, and then we all come back and at the back end and discuss it even more. So, the ontological structure of being, as my dad always said, why are there different contexts about God, African spirituality? What is our understanding? I talked about the fact that the ancestors had every aspect of nature as part of Chineke, and they took it beyond that. They ascribed each aspect of nature also to human beings, to the form of a man, the form of a woman. And that is just like I said earlier, to fully understand the creator. You see, I say, uh, there's an evil proverb that says, eat him, uh, you speak the truth based on what you understand. And that understanding comes from sometimes when you get away from that indoctrination, when you move away and begin to open your eyes on your own, you begin to study, you begin to try and do your own understanding and research. Okay. Remember that our ancestors believed this before the coming of the uh, uh, Europeans, before the coming of the Arabs. Now, I'm not here to say that these people are bad people. That's not the point. The point is that it existed. Our concept of Chineke existed before anybody came to tell us about it. And if you don't understand that, and if you don't believe that, then your ancestors did not exist. Okay, so we, Chineke existed in relation to nature. Okay, so they imagined this physiological structure of, of excuse, it's of, of the creator and had the way of departmentalizing the forces. And those forces also have human, they also ascribe to our human uh, forms. So let's talk about the first one, the sun. I'm just kind of reiterating what I talked about last time. The sun, as the head of Chineke, the head of Chineke, omnipresence, omnipotent, and immortality. That's why the sun is called Anya, uh, Anya, Anya, the eyes that sees everything and never dies. Okay, but then that sun is is a part is seen as the brain of Chineke. Okay. I want you to see how, even though it's connected to nature, it's also being connected to the human being. The sun is called Anyanwan, which means that it never dies. The eyes of Chineke in everything, always seeing everything, never dies. Then the next is the sun is Ofonogu, to symbolize God's sense of truth, justice, fair play and good conscience embodied in humans as the soul. Here's what I'm saying to you. We're not disconnected from Chineke. 
every aspect, every attribute that we give to Chineke, we also attribute to humanity because we believe that right where we are, God is. Chineke is right there. Now, when I say God, when I say Chineke, I just want you to remember that Chineke has a name in every language. I say Chineke because I'm Igbo. You may say uh, uh, Olodumare because you're Yoruba. You may say Obasikenyon because you're ethnic. You may say Anyami uh, 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 because you're Ghanaian. You may say whatever. You may call Chineke whatever. It doesn't matter. What's important is that we are understanding the relevance of our culture in our relationship to the creator. So when I call Chineke, I'm not saying you must say Chineke. But I'm saying Chineke because that's what it is to us, to the Igbos, is Chineke. Even but to the Igbos, it's also Chineke, it's Chuku. You know, it also has different, depending on what part of Igbo land you're from. So I'm not here to say, oh, this is the only way. So like I said earlier, there is no exclusive truth. But our Fonogu symbolizes God's sense of truth. This is what, when African people are gathered together, it doesn't, you don't have to sign contracts. That's way in the past. But of course, now with the coming of the European influences, we have to sign everything. Ofonogu, jidofo, jidogu. When, when, you, when, when great people are speaking, when the kings and the queens are sitting together, when a person is brought to them, they say they bring Ofo, they bring Ogu. And please, for those who are nervous about a woman saying Ofo and Ogu, please get a, you know, get a grip. African culture originally has no, dis we, we, are, we, we, we don't discriminate in terms of what we can do, what we can say because of gender. Because if Chineke is in me as a woman, if he, Chineke is in you as a man, Chi, male, aka female, com combined energies. So we don't have room for discriminating. So when somebody gets nervous because a woman says this, that's not African culture. That's introduced mindset because everybody has value. So, but Ofonogu is what we use because when we have to uh, 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 come together to, to help, when, when, when two or more people have issues and we have to come and solve it, when the elders are there to solve it, they bring Ofo, they bring Ogu. And that's all they need. That is Chineke's presence right there. We don't have to sign contracts. We don't have to swear on the Bible. We don't have to swear on the Quran. You just bring up four, you bring all good. Understand, you cannot tell a lie over here. Once the, 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 the presence of Chineke, truth and the symbol of Chineke, or for no good, truth, justice, fair play, and good conscience. Once it is in your presence, represented by that of Onogu, you have to understand that you must be truthful, you must pay attention, you must be honorable, you don't need to swear on nothing. That relationship that we had with Chineke kept us honest human beings. It kept us kind. If it's connected to our soul, then we understand that we, our soul has to be pure. It has to be honorable. We have to be pure and honorable in the presence of the image, the concept that we associate to the conscience of Chineke or Fonogu. That's it. We don't stand there and swear by no Bible. We don't stand there and swear by no Quran. We stand by the knowing of our ancestors of Fonogu, our conscience, our soul. What is it that we do today? We don't even operate based on that anymore. We have no conscience. We have no soul, literally. That's why people are going around. It's okay to kill. It's okay to abuse human beings. Because when you believe that somebody died for your sins, you don't hold yourself responsible for anything anymore. Or Fonogu tells you, yes, you are responsible. It is your responsibility to be honest, truthful, kind, that's a symbol of God's, God's presence in your conscience, in your soul. So when you do what you do, remember Ofonogu. Whatever you're doing, remember Ofonogu. 
the governor of uh, of of of, of uh, Florida flew 50 innocent immigrants looking for a place Look, looking to run away from for from uh, abuse in their own con home countries and they lied to them because they don't have a funogu they swore on that bible and they know they can get away with it somebody died for their sins so they could do that to other human beings put them on a plane and send them to florida no food no water no shelter nothing because they are political props when you don't have conscience you do things like that but a funogu will not allow you to do that i see you media whatever you want may china can do it for you what do you want for others it shouldn't be the same thing you want for yourself but you know chineke has a way to make things to right a wrong i'm just using this particular experience because when you lack conscience you do if none of you know what the president what the governor of uh, uh florida did to those immigrants you need to go uh, to your browser and check it out that is the absence of a funug but in our ontological st structure that is where that is what guides our sense of responsibility kindness humanity to each other it's not aside from us we are it Everything we ascribe to nature, nature being a part of God, we ascribe to ourselves as well, almost as a sense of responsibility. If only you're not awful, what you seek, so shall you find. But you cannot find it if you're not fair, if you're not truthful, if you have no semblance of justice, if you don't understand good conscience, if your soul is bad, nothing you want happens. This is our people. This is how we believed. And we lost that because we've embraced something else. Next in structure, they saw Agunsi as the spirit representing representation of the wisdom of Chineke, to which traditional medicine practitioners devote divination and clairvoyance. The brain of Chineke in the ontological structure. When you talk about brain, that's a human it, that reminds you about that human aspect of what we ascribe to the creator. We're not saying that the creator doesn't exist. We're saying that all that power, all that energy is within us. We are structured to represent the power of Chideke. That means we're not weak. That means we have no reason to not be successful. That means we stop whining. You have a brain, use it. You have wisdom, use it. It's not up there in the sky somewhere. It's in you. Chineke is right where you are, waiting for you to use everything given to you for your own good. And our, our traditional rulers, our traditional medicine practitioners, they use this concept in their practice. So if you are a Dibia, I am sure that you understand that. The ontological structure of Chineke must be important to you if you are a diviner, if you are, uh, if you are a, um, uh, a Dibia. You can't, after you do all of that, turn around and say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Allah. If, you're, if, if you understand the structure, call upon your ancestral name. Call upon the name that your ancestors used for the creator. Do you understand what I'm saying to you guys today? There's a, you're called an onuku. An onuku is somebody who doesn't know, doesn't want to know, and easily and gullible and easily swayed by other people's nonsense. But today we're telling you, let the good fall into your mind today, into your hands. Learn. That you're more powerful than you've been told. If you, if our ancestors believe that we are connected to the supreme being, my God, how can we be weak? How can we be weak? How can
can we curse our ancestors by not believing what they believe? When what they believe is so powerful, it empowers you. You've got the brain of Chineke. Agunsi, the brain of Chineke. Remember that. Agunsi, Enwam Agunsi. Agunsi, the brain of Chineke. Wisdom of Chineke. You have wisdom. E.G. Megan, what are you doing with it? What are you doing with the wisdom so graciously given to you by the Most High? Be so good talking about other people's concept of Chineke, but you don't know yours. Next. Kamalo representing the forces of nature. I, I just, I, what I'm trying to get you guys to see, the connection between our association of Chineke to the elements, to nature. But then we also turn around to imagine that aspect of the creator within us. So still here again, Chineke is now apart from us. Nature is now a part of it. We are part, we're connected to nature. Kamalo representing the forces of the sky, rain, thunder, lightning, wind, storms, moon, stars. Can we get away from such things? No, that's what makes life worth it. That's what makes our living worth it. It's likened to the slapping arm of God, of Chineke. If you're Yoruba, it's Sango, Ekpenyon, in Efiki Bibio, metaphysics. In other words, when you do something wrong, honey, mm, Chineke will pay, give you a little payback, will slap you a little bit and let you know you ain't doing it right. Nothing wrong with that. But here again, I'm trying to get you to see as much as our ontology refers to nature, but it turns it right back around to us. Well, what life is all about in essence. We are what life is all about. There's no room for hesitation. There's no room for weakness. Anything that you can have, you want to do, you already got that power, it's in you. According to our metaphysics, it's in you. I'm Bundike. <laughs> but we got to know it. If you don't know, you don't know. Know what you don't know. If you don't know it, take the time to learn it. <clears throat> the rain, the thunder, lightning, wind. I don't know about you, but ooh, I love it when it rains and storms. Because I don't like it when it, it destructs, it's destructive. The, the, the nature is angry when that happens. Something we've done wrong. At least that's how the ancestors believed. That's why you have to be honorable. You have to honor the ancestors, honor nature. That is where Chineke is. That's the handiwork of God. If you want to see Chineke, just look up. Look up. Look around you. You want, It's okay to read books. It's okay to read books. There's nothing wrong with reading books. There's nothing wrong with reading books. Read them. You learn. But our ancestors did not have books back then they learn from the handiwork of chideke all around them and then they brought it home to themselves uh, you can't beat that that's power that's power next came annie annie or allah some people call it allah so annie Mother Earth, covering the hills, the mountains, rocks, and everything under the earth, it is likened to the foot of Chineke. Think about what I'm saying to you, my people. Think about it. Chineke is everything. The hills. That part of Chineke, Ani, Oala. Mother Earth. Hmm? The hills, the mountains, rocks, and everything under the earth, it is likened to the foot of Chineke. Here again, it brings it back to us, the foot. Chineke's foot. That's the connection. Should we not be kind 
to, to the hills, to the mountains, rocks, everything on the earth? Should we not take our, feel a sense of responsibility to take care of those things? Right now, go to the landfills all over the world. Go to Africa. The rest of the world just brings all their junk and dump it there in Africa. Destroy, the, 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 destroy Mother Earth. Look at what's going on in Delta State in Nigeria. All the oil. People come and just dump things there. They don't have no respect for nature. And then those people who depend on nature for their feeding, they become destitute and you laugh at them. Why can't these African people take care of themselves? Well, they were before all this nonsense happened. They were before the oil industries came and destroyed their lands. They were doing everything on their own. They didn't need help. Wherever a short man can find space to hang his bag, that's where he hangs it. You may not think that we, we, we were lavish, but to us, nature fed us. Nature took care of what we needed. We weren't busy trying to see who had a Mercedes and who had all this fancy stuff that we used to kill each other for. Welitanya Ginelu is a song. Welitanya Ginelu, Welitanya Ginala, Leanya Buru Buru, Hukwa Ihe, Nile Neku Mendo, Ihe Nile Kebina Uwa, Ihe Nile Kebina Miri, Mahaduku, Mahadenta, Mahadema, Mahadenjo, Haneketazu, Uninechuku. Look around you, everything in this world receives God's blessings in equal amount. So we have no reason to hate each other. We never went to war because of God. We never went to war. Go do your African history. It was never about war. It was about, about God. Other things maybe, but not about God. It was a mindset then. We can tap into a little bit of that and quell down some of the greed about having worldly things that don't do anything. You, when you die, nobody, you, you don't, nobody gives you that stuff. Nobody buries you. A rich man, a billionaire, when you die, the only thing that will be in that coffin with you will be your suit. If you're lucky, they'll get the best suit you have. If you're lucky, they'll put some sh shoes on you. You may get a tie, but that's about it. They're not going to put your fancy cologne on you because it wouldn't matter. That fancy car you drive, it wouldn't matter. These are things we kill ourselves for. These are things that we consider to be more important than our relationship with our world, our relationship with our Chineke. Your relationship with Chineke is not what some pastor said uh, uh, from a book. Look around you. The DBS will not tell you, yes, that, that we have the Nkomi coming out soon, but it's words of wisdom that you can use for your daily living. Pragmatic living. Genti. Genti, listen up. When African spirituality, when the DBS tell you, we're not telling you anything about something far-fetched somewhere. We're telling you what our ancestors believed and how we it worked for them. And some people say, well, you know, if it worked for them, why did they allow slavery to happen and all that sort of thing? Well, life is such that if you lay your guard down, somebody will come in and, and, and do whatever they think they will do. So, but we don't want that to happen anymore. But I still, you see, some of our guards are still down because there are still our people being taken away into other countries uh, for slavery. So let's think about that. Next is Ekuroche, female and imomiri male, responsible for living waters such as streams rivers, lakes, seas, and oceans. In Yoruba, they are known as Oshun and Olokun, uh, Ndemabasi in Efiki Bibio, Uwu in Ijo, uh, like, uh, they're, they're likened, excuse uh, the error here, they're likened to the two breasts of Chineke from which the milk of human kindness continuously flows to suckle and sustain life. My God, how sacred is the human life, the human body, when the ancestors saw us in the human body saw God in us. How sacred are we? But we allowing some other spiritual thought 
to infiltrate to the extent that we just throw out our own. We don't even see the wisdom in our things. I am always reminded of what my father said. Our spirituality is our greatest strength. Yet last, yet not least, is the part of the creator responsible for the totality of vegetation with emphasis on agricultural vegetation called Orishoko in Yoruba and called Vodou in uh, Togo or Dahomey, light and to be uh, Dahomey light and to the heads of Chineke. It is this Vodou that the French misrepresented as voodoo, from which voodooism is derived. Ladies and gentlemen, it isn't what people call you that's the problem. It's what you answer to. It isn't what people say about you that's the problem. It's what you tell them about you. When our ancestors offer prayer and honor to any part of the ontological structure of Chineke, which their shrine represented. It is by virtue of Chineke being in everything, in us, in nature, the imminence of Chineke in everything, not outside of Chineke. We are not outside of Chineke. In other words, if you have a man hit you on the head, hand or foot, can you say that that man has not made, it direct, made a direct attack upon your person? This is how our African ancestors see where they give reverence in their shrine to Chineke using their own names for the same, of course. They do not see their exercise as different shrines. Every aspect of the, uh, uh, that they have ascribed to Chineke has a shrine dedicated to it for the focus, for the psychological focusing of the Dibia, of the diviner. But it doesn't mean that these are uh, 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 extra gods. It's not small uh, independent gods are distinct from uh, for the Supreme Chineke. Challenging parallel or competitive posture. No. It means to them that every aspect of Chineke can be called upon in a different space, but it's still Chineke, one Chineke. So when you look at the ontological, every aspect of it, nature, human form, all of it is all part of the great Chineke. And when they do their divination and focus on any part of it, it's not to a different God. It's still to the Chineke. Just like your head, when somebody hits you on the head, you don't say, oh, they just hit me on the head. My, they didn't hit my hand. They didn't hit my leg. So uh, they're okay. No, it's an attack on you. It's it, all part of you. It's all part of you. Or any part of you that's attacked is you that's attacked. So any part of Chineke that they are, are, are our ancestors prayed to. Now I'm not talking about lesser gods and all that. I'm just talking about an, uh, the ontology of Chineke. What that means to us. Every aspect of Chineke is part of Chineke. Whichever one that our diviners, the Dibias are focused on is still one Chineke. And the power of Chineke is in you. Thank you so much for your attention to my presentation. And at this time, I would like to bring in the devious to have further discussion. Hello, devious. Take it away. That was that was beautiful. That was beautiful. I found myself in the classroom all over again. So <laughs> I want to thank you for that. Uh, I know that uh, uh, Dibe Chidezier will have a whole lot to say about uh, your presentation and all the information that we uh, discerned from it. I just want to talk to a couple of things because sometimes when you talk about African spirituality, there's this disconnect. There's this feeling that African spirituality is different or African religion is different from any other world religion. I'm here to tell you people, no, it's not. 
the processes are different, are different, but the premise is the same thing. Every human being, as long as you being, believe in a you know higher being, you believe that you were created by something, we all look up to something greater than ourselves, and that something is the almighty Chineke, God, Olodumare, Tamuna, Wubangiji, Yahweh, Nkulunkulu, Ususulele, Chineke, God in many languages. If I say Chineke and you say God, please don't look at me as some evil human being or somebody who is talking about something different from what you're talking about. God is just a European word describing the same thing that Chineke is describing, describing the same thing that Yahweh is describing, describing the same thing that Allah is describing. We all don't speak the same languages, so you cannot expect me in darkest black Africa to call God Allah. It's not part of my culture to call God Yahweh. It's not part of my culture to even call Chineke God. I'm not European. The word God came to me when I was colonized. So don't look at African spirituality as something that is different from any other thing that any other world culture does because it is not. We do things that are relevant, influenced by our environment. That's what precipitates the different ways that different cultures worship God, Chineke, because our cultural and environmental experiences are different. A long time ago, maybe not a long time ago, but on this show, I talked about the Eskimo and the Amazonian. And I talked about if you ask the Eskimo his evidence of Chineke, he's going to point at the natural forces around him that sustains him, that helps him live. The life-sustaining forces around him, of course, one is common to all of us, is the air that we breathe, which he knows he did not create. The polar bear is in his environment. The snow is in his environment. The walrus is in his environment. The Arctic fox, all those animals that the Eskimo eats in his environment is part of his evidence of a creator because he did not create those things. So he gives thanks. He ascribes the creation to something greater than him or her and develops a system of worship in praise of that higher spirit that is responsible for the forces that sustain the Eskimo. Now, if you go to South America, you talk to the Aztec, the Inca, or the Mayan. Ask him the same question. He's going to talk about the jungle, the houses, all the animals, the river, the houses, all the fish, the snakes, the jaguars, the anacondas, the okapis, all those things that sustain the Eskimo in the Amazon jungle is the Eskimo's evidence of a higher being because the Eskimo understands that he did or she did not create those life-sustaining forces. So they develop a system of worship that is relevant to their environment. So the system of worship for the Amazonian is totally different from the system of worship of the Eskimo because the Eskimo doesn't have a jungle and the Amazonian doesn't have snow. But what has happened to the African is that the Eskimo goes to the Amazon and tells the Amazon uh, Amazonian to start seeing snow, to start seeing a polar bear, to start seeing God the way the Eskimo sees God, even though in the environment of the Amazonian, there is no polar bear. That is the African's Achilles heel and that's what we're suffering from now. Secondly, my second point is this. Every world religion has an ontology. Every single one of them. So when we talk about ontology and we talk about Ofonogu, we talk about our name, we talk about uh, Kamalo, Agunsi, Fijoko, Ekuroche, Imomiri. It's no different from what you say in Christianism the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. That is the ontology of Christianism. Is it not? Yes, it is. Can you have the Father without the Son? Can you have the Son without the Holy Ghost? You cannot have any one of them singularly. You must have all of them. 
relevant in this hierarchy of supplication. Mm -hmm. Go to Buddhism. Buddhism has the same thing. The Buddhists don't believe in God. They believe that life is about suffering. And they develop an ontology that will help you to achieve nirvana. And in that ontology, it is meditation, spiritual awareness, physical labor, and good behavior, which will ultimately lead you to nirvana. Mm -hmm. All world religions have an, have, have an ontology, whether they believe in a higher being or whether they believe in a process where God is not responsible for anything. Rather, the human being is responsible for their condition. And there are certain things that you have to do as a human being to achieve spiritual enlightenment. In pagan religion, it's called Christ. So while some people run around here talking about Jesus Christ, uh, I got news for you. Christ is a pagan title for holy men. He precedes Jesus Christ. Who, by the way, is Yehoshua ben Joseph, but that's another argument or discussion for another time. The point I'm trying to make is, do not let the European or anybody outside of your own culture define you and tell your story because they're always going to tell your story where it disadvantages you and give them the advantage and makes you look inferior. And through, how do I say, an incessant educational uh, 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 programming that has permeated Africa since colonization and slavery, we now look down upon ourselves. We now have no understanding that there is nothing that our ancestors were doing that all other world religions didn't do and are still doing today. Yes. People, you must understand that culturally speaking, the world is identical mm -hmm. in its meaning. The world is identical yes. in what it is they want to achieve when it comes to religion and spirituality and achieving a certain spiritual enlightenment and connection mm -hmm. with the Almighty. Yes. The only difference is the process. Yes. That's the only difference in it. And finally, mysticism is part of this spiritual journey. Images and idols are relevant. There's no world religion. There's no religion in the world that does not have images and idols representing their philosophy. Yes, say it again. In Buddhism, you have it. Mm -hmm. In Shintoism, you have it. Mm -hmm. In Zoroastrianism, you have it. Mm -hmm. In Sikhism, you have it. Mm -hmm. In Christianity, you have it. In Islam, you have it. There is no religion in this world that does not have images and, 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 and idols representing a certain aspect of their philosophy or their spiritual or religious ontology. Mm -hmm. We have uh, uh, Anyamu. He has his own shrine. You have Kamalu. They have theirs. You have to yeah. You have that. Mm -hmm. These things are important and does one thing and one thing only. Psychological focusing. Without images and idol representing an ontology or religious ontology of any form, that religion is non-existent. Mm -hmm. you, cannot yeah. play, you cannot focus by looking at air. You can't see it. Whatever concept that you may have of God, it comes to you in your mind and you represent that understanding through images. Mm -hmm. So when you see a black man or a woman with an African image representing a certain aspect of our ontology, please don't look at them as if they're involved in some kind of voodoo, devil, worship, or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't see you guys crying when you lean or kneel in front of the cross mm -hmm. and you all sign. Mm -hmm. I don't care about get mad when you see a Buddhist going to the temple and <clears throat> kneel down in front of a Buddhist uh, image. The, the idol and images, idol images in Africa, they don't call it image, they call it idols, mm -hmm. just to impugn our spiritual credibility. That's right. There's the call images mm -hmm. to elevate themselves above everything that is African spiritually. Mm -hmm. Don't get fooled. 
Okay. Don't get food. Thank there you. is nothing that anybody else does in mm. this world, religiously or spiritually speaking, mm. that is made mm. different from mm. what the African does. We See. are valid in all forms of our spirituality. Yes, yes. Thank you. I share. I share. I'm going to give uh, uh, Dibia Chedos here, then I'll go to Dr. Money. Come on, Dibia. Yeah. Uh, one can read the whole lot of textbooks from that little uh, uh, lecture. It appears little because uh, it presented the PowerPoint. That is a whole thesis that we can write a thousand pages on and from because it represents the whole totality of African uh, spirituality from the Igbo perspective. And when we want to intellectually explain spirituality, we call it metaphysics. Why do we do so? So, so that we can intellectualize our spirituality and to become explainable to people. And then we now see how it forms a structure for every of our societal uh, 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 being or societal beingness. The first instance you have there, the ontology, which is the structure. We have seen the structure hierarchized into about eight. Then you have the cosmology, talking about, talking about the origin. Then you have the cosmogony, talking about the relationship of the opposites. Now, our cosmology, our ontology, our cosmogony is unique to us. And by the time the Europeans came, they didn't understand it. For those who understood it, they quickly knew that the only way to cause disembowelment amongst us is to destroy our spirituality and implant their own. Because if you really want to finish any human being, break their spine, their spiritual spine completely, just remove what they know and then implant something else. Unfortunately for us, this structure was known only among the, tra the, in the intelligentsias, traditional intelligentsias you call Dibia. Only they knew it in the structure that SNY has just displayed before us. The ordinary members of the society, of the society, traditional society, knew it by its symbolism and shrines and idols, so images. They didn't know it like the Dibias know. And that is why when the colonialists came, the first thing they did anywhere they went to in Africa is to, de to destroy, kill members of the intelligentsia, the Dibia. That's the first thing they did. Because once you kill them, then there's nobody to transfer that knowledge. Now, quickly, what makes our ontology unique? What makes it unique is that unlike other uh, systems that say God created the, uh, the universe and distance itself from the universe. So it represents, like you see in Newton's metaphysics, the Christian uh, spirituality informs Newton's metaphysics, Newton's mechanics. When it talks about the absolute realm and the relative realm, meaning that God created the universe and then resigned itself to itself. So the universe is separate from God. And God only regulates the universe by thinking about itself. You also find this in Aristotle. That for us, the ubiquitous spirit, Chukwu Kikabiyama, manifested itself as male and female energy, Chineke. And the physical universe is its own manifestation. So matter is congealed energy for us. That is why everything is sacred. And this principle, you know it as vitalism and pantheism. Vitalism meaning that the all ubiquitous spirit engender the world. And that spirit is present in everything. The closest you can uh, 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 image you can use in understand is Einstein's theory of conservatism, conservative principle. That is why Einstein, relying on Jewish mysticism, deflated Newton's theory of motion. Newton was able to think about gravity as the force pulling down every object that goes up. 
but he was not able to solve the problem of motion. And that is because with Newton's law of mechanics, what you are going to have is that the entity responsible for motion is outside the body that moves. So the way God is outside the universe and it moves the universe by thinking about itself. So the best you can build with Newton's mechanics in terms of motion is a cart drawn by a horse or a barrel pushed by a human being. But with Einstein's principle of conservatism, then the every conservative principle like you and I has energy inside it. Now, once that, and this energy is relative, you have kinetic energy responsible for motion, energy for thinking, energy at their different relative gradation. Once there's kinetic energy in a being and there is space, that entity can move. The motion now leads to duration. Duration brings about what they call momentum. Momentum from momentum, you derive time. So you begin to see physics already. And now, so our ancestors say, this potent force is in everything, pantheism. And so everything has the potent force of Chineke in its relative level, hierarchy. And that is the principle of Chi and Eke manifesting in everything. And so there is motion in the universe because the Chupo Kekadama did not distance itself from its creation, rather that force is in every physical thing. And that is why we deal with what you call life forces, life forces. We are not talking about empty, the sun as an empty draft thing, the way science looks at it. We are not talking about the, uh, an inert object, the earth as an inert object. No, it is sacred because God's potent force is a need. It's what, it is a manifestation of God's potent force. So it is sacred. And that is how the human being is. If you go to uh, Dogon uh, uh, spirituality, you get it when it when it compares God to seven vibrations, and it says the this uh, it says the first and seventh vibration brought about vegetation, the fifth and so-so vibration brought about animal, the so and so vibration brought about human being. So all these makes our ontology, our cosmogony, our cosmology, our spirituality, our metaphysics unique then you begin to see again the principle of ago for us as the ego ago is where the form the disconnect between chi and eke is in ago that form so when you when uh, you compare ago with brain of god the mind of god all right what you are saying is that it's in ago that form takes place it's a now it takes place. So you begin to see intellectualism. And so connecting these to what we, uh, a particular lecture that I think was as wine or no, it was uh, uh, Divya Udemizye that, uh, uh, that gave that uh, lecture. When we talked about, uh, 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 for us, when we are praying, prayer is not just trying to pray to God up there. No, prayer mm -hmm. is that an active force. I, as a human being, watching Eke, I, as a incarnated as a male force. Yes. Dr. Thank Simona you. and Eze Wani, incarnated as female force. Yes. But we are part where I, as a manifestation of this Chineke, I'm yes. activating my beingness, connecting it with Chineke, life force, here and now, I am here. There's yes. no distance. Yes. So you begin to get Einstein's theory of electricity electromagnetism the electromagnetic force forces are there they are in us we are in it we are floating in it it's inside us we are inside it so we are inside chineke and scones and mass is in us we are in it we activate it when we pray that is why we pour libation so that we can activate it yes and talk to it directly so yes. if you understand our ontology our metaphysics our spirituality, our cosmology, our cosmogony, it endows us with a lot of power. That was why when I realized it, I had to distance Jesus Christ. Because the status Christianity gave to Jesus Christ is what I am, is what you are, is what every entity is. Yes, 
Yes. So that yes. Was when a when a <laughs> pastor challenged me that I could not challenge him, and I beat my chest and I said, "Before Jesus Christ and His Father in heaven, I chose to go." Akome, Akome. The classroom. Yes. Yes. Of realization. Thank you. Nde wo no. Nde wo. Yes. Akome. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You guys are bringing the fire today. Hey, listen, we're going to continue. When I come right back, uh, the next speaker is uh, uh, Dr. Monet. Man, mm -hmm. I'm going to come right back. You guys got me all, you know, my coffee, I got to, <laughs> I got to add a few more <laughs> coffee in my, uh, in my cup because I am revved up right now. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I just want to uh, take a quick moment and uh, we shall return. Uh, we have a young, um, we have a project. It's a com uh, it's a partnership with the African Women Mobilization Commission. We are doing, uh, uh, we are encouraging people to sponsor children. Uh, you know what? I will tell you very honestly, and, and the, the reason why that's, this is so important is I, I started checking, what do I waste my money on every day? And it, within a week, you know, you buy stuff you don't even need. Mm -hmm. And how, if I look at my, I look at my garage, I have so much junk. I don't need all this stuff I'm buying. But you know, we have that impulse. We want to, oh, you go to the store. Oh, this look good. This look good. Mm -hmm. But you know what I decided to do? I have to write down exactly what I need. If I bump, what is it that I truly need? And that's what I will buy. If I don't need it, I will use that extra money and I and sponsor a child. Some yeah. poor little baby out there that could use my two little dollars and five cents. So don't look, each one of you, don't be about it. Don't talk about cheerism. Don't talk about this if you're not going to be about it. It's a waste of time. You still don't know who Chineke is. If you don't take a moment of your time to help another human being, this is what our role is in terms of how we express our humanness, our, our theism, <laughs> is to make sure somebody is doing well because of us. So I have sponsored a child. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to call my friends to help me sponsor this child. Can you sponsor a child? Watch this. African Women Mobilization Commission Child Sponsorship Program. Here at OMSI, we believe that every child deserves a chance to thrive, no matter who they are or where they live, and that opportunities help a child to develop and build precious imagination. A healthy and imaginative mind can see the possibilities of the future. And a child with a future can weather the storms of life if given the right tools and the chance. Sponsoring a child helps a child to eat, get an education, have good health care, and gain a friend and mentor in you. I know you want to know more. Sponsor a child by visiting AfricanWomenCommission.net. After all, a child is waiting. Register to meet your sponsored child today. This is my challenge to all of you. If you're a cheist or you claim to be a cheist, you must sponsor a child. And it's not difficult to sponsor a child. It could be $1. It could be $2. It, it doesn't have to be too much when you think about the exchange rate. Now, you don't have to sponsor a child in Africa. You can sponsor a child here. Sponsor wherever we show you. If you go to the site, it will show you from all around the world where we need to have children sponsored. Right now, we have 100 children from some camps. What do we want to do for them? Give them shoes, give them a home a place, a warm meal every day, give them a roof over their heads where their parents can't even take care of them because of displacement. Just think, just think, what is your legacy as a cheese? Some child is eating today because of you. Some child may have a pair of shoes because of you. Some child may have a t-shirt, a jacket, a pair of shorts, anything because of you. And if you sponsor one child, you can ask your friend, hey, 
Help me sponsor this child. If you want to sponsor two, three, four, you look, $20 will sponsor four kids. $20 will sponsor four children. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yesterday, I got a call that 17 children died because we haven't fed them. Cheese, cheese do not turn their backs on the needful. Please, I ask you, make your selection and go to the website. Oh, uh, uh, um, Thursday, on Thursday, you'll see the pictures of all the children with their names and addresses and everything. Just remember, this is a partnership between Chiism and the African Women Mobilization Commission. So it's part of our Onyinye project. So you don't say it's another coming because I'm we are, we're part of Chiism. <laughs> we're part of Chiism. <laughs> so it's important to know that we are doing everything we can to help humanity. So be a part of it. On Thursday of next week, go to African Women Mobilization Commission and see all these kids. Please take it, pick one. Each one of them are desperate for somebody to love them. So be, uh, and, and when we come back next Sunday, I want to see how many of you will tell me I have sponsored a child. I want to see. Because if I don't see anybody, then you guys, Hebrew <laughs> people say, <laughs> you did, you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> you're, just joking. you're just jokers. You don't, you don't even believe what we're talking about here. So one child, one dollar a month, and that's all you can do. Because guess what? You can get another person to help you to sponsor that child uh, uh, until that child gets, you know, as many, you know, you can have as many of your friends help you sponsor one child. You can do that, can't you? You're a chist. And it doesn't have to be just American. So, give me a chair, does here. One dollar, one naira. I don't care what you got. 50 kobo. I don't care. Select a child that some of them are in Nigeria right there. Anyhow, <laughs> we're back. Continue the conversation, the ontology of Chineke. It has been exciting. Our DBS have brought the fire. Thank you. Thank you for what you are doing because you are really opening minds. At least I hope so. And now we go to our third presenter today. <laughs> uh, well, actually, our fourth presenter today, Dr. <laughs> Simone. Hey, Dr. Simone, you're now Dibia. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Dibia. Dibia is the title for doctor. Yes, thank so you. We want to we want to ascribe our designation of doctor to you as well. So Dibia, thank you, so thank I'm you. Not saying doctor, <laughs> I'm not saying thank doctor. I'm not saying doctor. Monet, anyways. Now Dibia Monet, GC, I go wine, I go wine. Consistency. Okay, come on, your turn. Yes, oh. I, I just would like to um, first thank Chena K. And I would like to thank the ancestors and, of course, all of you, my spiritual mother and uh, spiritual fathers. I so appreciate everything that you have poured into me. Um, you are truly my mentors and truly show Chena K through you. And I appreciate you allowing Chena K to work through you because um, this message was so um, important to me. And Chena K has been working with me with this very message. And through a lot of my clients, I see my clients um, and, you know, I do intuitive work and healing work and things like that. And what has been coming to me lately is the different ways that Chena K shows up, the different ways that people, um, their path, their path or where the or where they're at with their communication with China K. And what has um, been revealed to me is that many people have different ways of communicating with China K as as talked about um, with this teaching. And this verifies that this is a confirmation that that is absolutely true that what China K is saying is, is saying is absolutely true. And so here in Western society and Christianity and Islam, they do not teach the all of the aspects of China K, which I feel is just a lower level of maturation when it comes to spirituality. 
Well, we have to understand when we're dealing with African spirituality, we're dealing with a higher level of esoteric knowledge that many people are not aware of. And they have not gotten to that, have not come to that um, place in their existence as of yet. But we are here to um, teach that to them, to teach them the many aspects of China K and how China K lives within nature and you know the whole universe. All of the ways that China K shows up and communicates with us. And so this is another level of, of spiritual maturation. We're going higher in our existence. And I think where China K is taking everyone, because I'm seeing it in a lot of my clients, is China K is showing up in these many aspects of the way that China K of the way that China K is and communicating with people through nature, through through the nature forces, through all of these aspects, you know. So we have to we we're here because society in a whole, the direction that we're going in, they're needing the knowledge so that they can mature into this um, this higher level of knowledge um, of spirituality. And so um, it is, you know, this is this is excellent. This was an excellent teaching and all of the knowledge that you hold is very, so important, especially at this time. A lot of people are, um, eyes are opening, they're coming out of um, organized religion as it is now and seeking um, something different. They're seeking the truth. And this is definitely the truth. And this is definitely how we should be looking and communicating with China K. And the respect, it goes into respect also. You know, they talk about the planet. Um, we're pretty much destroying the planet, but we're pretty much destroying aspects of China K. And we have to understand how important it is for us to have respect for nature. We have to understand how important it is to have respect for ourselves. Having respect for nature is having respect for ourselves because the earth is what sustains our life. Why would we destroy something that sustains our life? Why would we not have respect for something that sustains our life? And so we must understand that and go in this this direction. If if you are a Christian or if you are um, a Muslim or or whatever um, organized religion you are, you have to understand this is a higher level. This is a higher level of direct intimacy and communication with China K. This is a higher level. It's taking you your your. Your connection with China K will greatly expand if you are are you know if you're going down the path that China K is wanting you to go in. You may not understand it, but go in the direction of China K. And this show today is telling you that direction. It's expanding your knowledge, and so. You must go to that if you're really seeking China K. If you're really wanting a real relationship with China K, this is the way. This is this is the path. And for so many, um, a lot of with the Europeans and when when Christianity came in and Islam came in, they knew the power in this type of teaching. They knew the power, and that is why they did away with the spiritualists. The first thing they did was kill the spiritualists because they knew the power. They had to take the power first. And I know that um, Your Excellency had mentioned, she said, well, what about slavery? Where was your, your guys during slavery? Well, the first thing, this was very strategic. The first thing they did again was kill off the spiritualists get rid of the spirituality that is the power and they knew it 
And so we have to get back to our power. We have to get back to Chena K. All aspects of Chena K. There is not, you know, as we learned, it's a, you know, the Christianity, the, the concept of, okay, one God in one way, or, you know, God and the Son of God or Jesus. We have to understand that there's many ways. It's much more complicated than that. And we have to honor all aspects of Chena K and not just one or two. So we have to take it to the next level. And I guarantee you, if you take it to the next level in honoring all aspects of Chena K, you will grow spiritually. Your life will improve. You will gain power. So that is what I have to say. I'm very excited about the message and everything that has come forth today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Monet. Oh, Dibia Monet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Uh, you know, I mm -hmm. and, and quite frankly, what, what it is indeed we're trying to do here is to help us as a people to rediscover uh, yeah, how awesome. to live a spiritual life, spiritual-centered life not a religious centered life because a religious centers life that's not to say where we don't practice some form of uh, religious uh, uh, you know but uh, our focus is on how you can overcome the uh the mental how oh, what is the word i'm looking for the mental indoctrination that we've had to suffer over the years you know uh, telling us that, uh, you know, if we don't do this, we're going to go to this place that uh, God doesn't exist. But that's where people, you know, people burn and carry on. Hey, let me, let me, let me just, I just want to ask this question. Mm -hmm. What kind, that, for those of you who will get all bent out of shape, so be it. Okay. I mean, what kind of God, what kind of God will burn anyone for eternity? How many of you have been burned your, your little finger? How many of you, do you realize the pain? Now think about your whole body on fire for eternity. What kind of loving spirit is that? And unfortunately, that's what has been used to hold us back. That's what has been used to hold our people back. People have been conditioned to be afraid. We're so afraid because we just know that this and the other is going to happen. We're going, who wants to burn for eternity? That is a good psychological reason to believe in something. When that's embedded in your mind, uh-uh, you don't want to burn. So you got, you got to do whatever they say. That's living a religious life. That's a conditioning that keeps you in the coffers of somebody else. But a spiritual life, is living your life based on that connection. You did. You know, there's a song that the Africans sing. Uh, not every African knows it, but we know it. And, and, and forgive me, I will sing this song. And you did, you can come in. My voice is not the best, so don't really get upset that I'm croaking. But <laughs> I'm going to sing it anyway. And it, the, the message in there is powerful. I will worship the god of nature i will never believe man's doctrines sun moon and stars and seasons of the year show me clearly what god is now use god in this situation how come my life my growth and my death what god kept me till missions came here god of my life is the god of my race Man can show me what God is. Nature is same all over the world. Life, growth, and death for man, beasts, and plants. Beasts and the plants never ate Adam's fruit. Their death follows nature's plan. From me to God, there is no distance. There is no room for bishops and priests. Everyone must alone die his own death. 
that shows no preference at all. From now onwards, man can deceive me. This world was made by Chineke Nature can show me the hands of my God in hills, land and vales and dales. Isenu. 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 Pagazie. Nature can show me. That's what we talked about. The ontology. Nature can show me. Yeah, I, I use I use God and, uh, and or whatever interchangeably because everybody has a way of calling God. For those that understand, I say God. Those who understand, I say Chineke. I can say Ke. I can say Chi. Same thing. All not the same on us. Okay. So this is what we're about. Trying to get you to see your connection to the oh, oh my. Before we go any further, and I'll be going coming back to. Uh, uh, UD, uh, DB or UD to to share more thoughts, and then I'm going to ask our, our, our members to to ask questions, please, that we may answer for you. We'll be right back. One life to y'all. Hey, how y'all doing, man? You know what I'm saying? We just, I'm just walking out here in nature, and I just felt like I had to say thank you all for showing us the support. Cause I know there's been technical problems and been a lot of things going on in the world, but y'all stay and tune in every Sunday. And I much appreciate y'all for all the support. Over 11,000, I said 11,000. 111 subs on YouTube, so much love. Appreciate y'all. And I know there's over like thousands over on Facebook. But make sure to tune into our YouTube every Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Turn on the post notifications. Like, comment, skip, subscribe. Gosh. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. It will be much appreciated. And y'all have a wonderful day and have a blessed day. God bless you. Son, that's my nephew. I love that boy so much. I'm not sure he would like me to call him boy. He's a man now. But, ah, he's still a boy to be. He's my son. <laughs> Children never grow up as far as their parents are concerned. Or aunties and uncles, you know. So I, I, I want to continue our conversation. Welcome back again. The ontology of Chineke. Now I'm going to go to uh, Dibia Yudi. Yudi, any additional thoughts you want to share today? Oh, oh, before you start, let me be let me remind you that. Uh, uh, Dr. Monet, uh, 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 Dibia Monet always has a, an event at 11.30 that she has to go to. So she'll be leaving us again uh, at 11.30. And we want to thank you, Dibia Monet. Thank you so much for being here today. We enjoyed your presentation, the spirit. You're always very spirited. And so we enjoy having you. We look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Oh, incidentally, don't forget, next Sunday, you are the one that's going to make the, the presentation. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. And have a great Sunday. Thank okay. you so much. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye now. Okay. Give me a UD. Unmute yourself, UD. Unmute yourself. Okay. There you go. Pardon. <laughs> I, yeah. I forgot, because I got background noise sometimes and I didn't want it to kind of interfere with the program. Okay. But our relationship with Chineke is twofold. And it starts with this question. How many types or kinds of existence is necessary for recognition of relationship with the creator? Mm. Two of them. Hmm. One is the spirit. Yes. Of one ogu. Chineke's soul in you. Mm -hmm. The little faint voice in you that tells you what to do in times of trouble, what is right, what is wrong. Every human action has an internal resonance. There's a voice there that always lets you know when you're getting out of line. Of course, if you don't hear that voice, then it's safe to say you're a mental case. And we forgive you sometimes. But if you have that voice and you still do something wrong, you're evil. And you don't deserve a place among people of conscience. Then the other relationship when it comes to Chineke is nature. If nature goes out of work, if the air you breathe is poisoned, you die. If the 
earth is no longer able to sustain crops and animals. We will all die. So it is very important that we have this balance because it is a good spirit that takes care of this environment. Now I'm not talking about earthquakes and volcanoes. These things are part of this life-sustaining force and cycle and rebuilding. If you're a scientist, you'll understand that earthquakes and volcanoes and floods, they're all necessary. But one thing that is not necessary is the poisonous air you breathe or vegetation that no longer exists. It is your conscience that allows you to make sure that this environment that sustains you remains viable. So one without the order means nothing. The spiritual part of you is as important as the life-sustaining forces because it is the spiritual part of you that allows you to have a good relationship with your fellow human being. Because if we all just went around and did what we wanted and took what we wanted without conscience, without truth and justice, what kind of chaos do you think that we will be existing in where your neighbor can just come in here and covet your wife or murder you and take what's yours? So that balance is important. It is necessary to have this spiritual balance that allows you to exist with your fellow human being in peace and in harmony and allows you to take care of the environment that sustains you. This environment that sustains you, believe it or not, has a direct relationship with science. Science and religion, spirituality make bedfellows, but it's necessary. Let me say it again. Sometimes people say science is the enemy of religion, but it is not. It's just an explanation of an understanding of your environment. The DBS understood that. Western scientists understand that too. It's a relationship. Science and nature, though strange bedfellows they may make, but they are inseparable because nature is science. And the only way to explain nature is through science. To explain that relationship is through spirituality and religion, which again, religion and spirituality go hand in hand. You cannot separate both of them. And let me explain. Spirituality is about behavior. Religion in its etymology simply means a recognition that you are not responsible for those life sustaining forces. And once you ascribe the creation of this life sustaining forces to something greater than yourself, religion becomes automatic in you. That is the true meaning of religion. Religion does not mean Buddhism or Christianity or Shintoism or Sikhism, those are just religious philosophies that develop because of this realization that you are not responsible for these life-sustaining forces. So your environment now dictates this philosophy. And then somewhere along the line, that philosophy now becomes corrupted by those people that want to use this philosophy to control for economic and political reasons. So you have to look beyond the microscope. You have to think, and you've come to the right place to get the knowledge that you need. Religion is about reward and punishment. Okay, Dibia, touched on it. Yes, I'm so sorry. Good point, excellent. Religion Somebody asked a question. Reward and punishment. That's what it's all about. And let me just say something real quick and then I'll get off of it. Every religion has reward and punishment. In African religion, in Nichism, you come around, what, seven times? Yeah. Until you get it right. Mm -hmm. Reincarnation. Sometimes you come in as a stone, sometimes whatever. 
in Christianity, you go to hell. That's punishment for being bad here. You need reward and punishment in religion to control human behavior. If people walked around and thought that there's no consequence for their actions, what do you think will happen? Well, you've got a situation where your sins have been forgiven. Forgiven. And based on that, you can do whatever. All you have to do is go, go and, pray and, and say, you know, I have sinned. Anyway. You can, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can murder, rape, kill, do whatever it is that you want to do. But the moment you say, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, God suddenly forgives all your sin. This is just ammunition for you to be bad, hoping that you will get a chance to just accept Jesus Christ and all your evil will be forgiven. What manner of human control is that? You have to understand, everything, everything is interconnected. Yes. The schools, the churches, everything, and the prisons. Hello? Okay. So if your sin is forgiven, so why why do we have all these people in jail? All, all of them are Christian. Most of them are. Why are they in jail? Okay? Because nothing is if, forgiven. If your, if your sins have been forgotten, forgiven, why are you in jail? Why do we have all these people, millions of people in jail? So is it, <coughs> excuse me, who forgives the sins? Is it the uh, the uh, prison system, <coughs> or is it Chineke? Yeah, that's our philosophy. Let me say again what you did. Has said, "Imenma inatama, imenjo inatanjo." If you do good, goodness will follow you. If you do bad oh. things, the bad things will follow you. You know, I say, "Abe abe ma be butu kongola halahin kutuwa nga apoya." Don't come to my home with nothing but goodness because if you don't, bad stuff will follow you back. Whatever evil thought you have for me will follow you. Do you understand what I'm saying? So now, we have a question that I want both of you to answer, but I'll give my own response to it. And if you have uh, anything else that you want to add to it, please do. This is from Al Kachi Azubike. Uh, if someone starts talking to you about how the Lord or Jesus is blessing you, how you should trust in the Lord, etc. Question, how do you handle that when convening, conversing with family, friends or new acquaintances? Here's my response. There are some things you just avoid. Some things are not worth it. The important thing is, what do you know about who you are? If you feel at the moment, at that particular uh, time, that that person really needs a little lecture. Yeah. You can go into conversation. But for my part, I don't do that. It's not worth my time. I'm not going to attack you if you believe in Jesus. If you believe whatever you want to believe. You know what I say to people when they do that to me? I say, oh, I say in my language, I say, he say. That's it. He say. I don't argue. If, uh, if it's the Lord that blessed you, entity. If it's Jesus that blessed you, entity. I know who blesses me. I don't have to argue <laughs> with you about that. <laughs> you know, can't get to some, you know, whatever. You know, or you just, you just, uh -huh. you just tell them, thank you so much for sharing. And that's it. As they can I have a cup of coffee? Do you guys have some coffee? Just leave the conversation. It's not worth it. Because you are never going to solve that issue. You're not. You're not, because you have to understand it's embedded in there. I talked about hell. A lot of them believe on. Now they say all of that stuff, but I tell you one thing: a lot of them, particularly in Nigeria, they go to the Dibia after they say all of that stuff. They, they, are, they it's a, it's a state of confusion. You know, I don't want a no good to get me, so I got to go to the Dibia and make sure I'm safe there. I don't want Jesus to put me in jail, so I got to be. You know, it's such a, such confusion. So for you. When somebody approaches you with that, just tell them, Yagazie. Use your own, uh, you know, you kind of get them confused too when you say, I hear you, Yagazie. You say, oh. And then you move on. I you want know? to say something. You don't got me laughing. I'm just <laughs> cracking up. You are absolutely right. I really don't get involved with that conversation, but I want to catch you to understand one thing real quickly, just for your own personal spiritual growth. Or the question you just asked. Who is the Lord? 
What the Lord, what, who is the Lord? Is it Jesus or God? Second question. If you're a Christian, was David blessed by God? Was he a Christian? Was Abraham a Christian? Was Moses a Christian? Were the Israelis that came out of Egypt Christians? Think about what I just said. Were they not all blessed in the Bible? Jesus was not... wasn't a Christian. That, that's the point I'm trying to make. <laughs> so in the same holy book you're reading, think about Abraham was blessed by God. He wasn't Christian. Lot was blessed. It wasn't. Moses was blessed. It wasn't. Samson was blessed. It wasn't. All their heroes were blessed and they were not Christians. So that conversation is null and void and absolutely makes no sense other than to instill fear into you to cause you to lose your mind just like they have lost theirs and follow them blindly without asking questions, without mkumi, without looking beyond the microscope. Even non-Christians get Chineke's blessing. And mm -hmm. using their own religion, just point them to Abraham. That's right. He said, Dr. Dibia, Chedozi, go ahead, please. To add a little bit uh, salt and pepper to make the soup thicker. <laughs> Could you raise your uh, could you raise your volume? Yeah, uh, my okay. volume is raised already. Uh, oh, okay. just, just to add a little bit of salt and pepper and oil to make the soup sweeter. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a nomenclature. You should realize that the Christian and the Muslim are dealing with their own ontology. And in their ontology, the cosmogony is that male and female energies and opposites are always in antagonistic relationship. So the only way to resolve it is that one must put the other one in the pocket. So everything about your gospel for the Christian is psychological brain twisting, psychological yeah. torture. For Islam, it is beyond psychological torture to mental intimidation. And if that does not work, physical intimidation. This is what religions and all religions that proselytize, that preach, are conquering religions. so the way to do that is to hold to your own little purview because it's like talking about liberals or liberalists liberals are diehard fanatics they want to very subtly brain twist you psychologically twist you to key into their own it's only when you key into their own that there can be peace in the world when you don't key into their own process there can be peace in the world so to help you out akachi a chinese you know the Chinese and the Asians; they are their culture are similar. Their cultures are similar to ours. A Chinese went to the burial ground of his ancestor with a hot bowl of rice, and when he kept the hot bowl of rice on the grave, and then he started incantating. You can imagine the Chinese language how it sounds in our ear, and the Chinese man incantating. Meanwhile, the Englishman came. To his own graveyard of his own uh, uh, ancestor and kept flowers there and then knelt down and clapped his hands together and closed his eye and then stayed there he didn't say anything and then then when he finished he waited for the chinese man to finish and when the chinese man finished the english man was waiting and the english man now told the chinese man he said come why are you disturbing the dead? Does the dead eat rice? Why are you keeping a hot bowl of rice on the dead graveyard? <laughs> huh? And does the, the dead, do they have ears? Why are you disturbing the dead? Peace of the dead. And you know what the Chinese man gave him as a response? <laughs> he said, oh, well, thank you, Mr. Polish Englishman. But if my dead has ears, uh, has no ears to hear me and has no mouth to eat my rice. Does your own dead have no streets to smell your flowers? <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
I tell you, it's an English punishment. By the time your silence can speak to your death, my noise would have long, long woken up my own. So you see, yep. we don't go to what we believe. And then I have somebody here in the department. She taught me. And then a lot of us became professors. She's still where she is because she does not want to write anything that would offend her Christian religion. Anytime you are with her, she's always preaching Christ to you. So one of these days, we live in the same block. All right? So she gave me a lift. We came to, she saw me on the way. I decided to trek. So she said, gave me a lift. And then I followed her. So I was getting that. She said, Jesus loves you. Uh, Jesus loves you. He loves you greatly. He wants you. I know what I gave him for a response. I said, yes, I know that Jesus loves me, but I love myself better. And my ancestors, my ancestors love me most. Yeah. She burst into laughing, burst into laughing. So you must have your answers for them. You know, yeah. uh -huh. like one, I went to buy drugs in the pharmacy. And then this lady was giving me my drugs and smiling. And I was wondering why she's smiling. And then she said, have I found him? I said, who, Jesus? I said, oh, you found him? She said, yes. I said, oh, then keep him. I lost him over some many years ago. <laughs> so you keep him. Uh -huh. So you, he said that, but you can go. I said, never. I can't, I don't know. So you see that back? Oh, Self-realization. So you see, it's a question of holding to what you believe in. Uh -huh. So because let me tell you something. At my point of realization, I had to investigate because I had to investigate spirituality with physics. Now, if you look at what is the one presented to us, there's hierarchy. There's principle of hierarchy, complementarity, duality, cyclicality. The cyclicality is about reincarnation. And what does reincarnation say? Reincarnation says, in that class, they repeat here. Yeah? That is why there's no forgiveness of sin. It's okay. True, true. Uh -huh. is, so our system is a system of excellence. Mm -hmm. it, Say it again. The Christian and the Christian system is higher that class and not for going and not for going and then use hell of eternity mm -hmm. to await the person forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So which one do you prefer? The one that says repeat class when you pass you go to heaven. Right. Or yeah. the one that says, <laughs> uh, Say it again. Uh, the, the hell is here. In so far as you have not passed, heaven is only for those who have passed. There is no hell where you uh, God will punish people forever. And that is one of the things when I realized I say this God that wants to burn people forever, eternity in a, a eternal fire is vain, callous, and wicked. And can never be my God. That's right. That's wicked. right. That's so right. That's right. This God cannot be my God. It is callous and wicked. But upon further realization, I realized that Constantine and the Mohammed, uh, Mohammedans, Muslims, built the theory of hell to deter people from not believing in Christianity. Before the, uh, the evolution of Christianity, there was no doctrine like hell, eternal hell. The doctrine of hell was here, here, living, incarnating and staying here to pass your exam so that mm -hmm. what you confess before Chiku Opika Abiyama that you are coming to act to do. If you do not realize it, you repeat class until you attain self-realization before you go back. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when Christianity came, it took the he uh, hell and siphoned mm -hmm. it as usual, outside mm -hmm. into the super, super void. And mm -hmm. as a way of fear, psychological fear into people, so mm -hmm. that they even build physical hell here. If uh, the the, the um, value of inferno, we are the mm -hmm. burnt people alive for mm -hmm. not believing in Christianity. Catholicism mm -hmm. practice that a lot, burning people mm -hmm. at stake. Mm -hmm. with their yeah. You know, yeah. this was yes. the method of hell to people. This yes. was a, a doctrine founded just like purgatory in, in Catholicism, mm -hmm. founded to deter people from believing in their spirituality. If you mm -hmm. offend against new the Lord of the new religion, then Christianity, yes. then is you will go to hell. Thank you. Uh, yes, 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 yes. I want to. Yeah.
Uh, I want to share. The, thank you so much. You guys, you have. Whew, I'm learning a whole lot today. Um, I have this question, but I don't want you to answer it. I want you to keep it in mind because believe it or not, this is going to be part of our serious discussion next week. And I'll read it. This is from Akacha Azubike. Someone told me the original people and oldest teaching and philosophy came from the Nile and then crossed the Western Sahara, uh, Sahara uh, into Mali, Ghana, Burkina Faso, Northern Nigeria, etc. Those people have the true original knowledge. I want you guys to keep that in mind because that's going to be what we open our conversation with next week before Dr. Uh, I mean, Dibia no, uh, no, uh, Monet makes her uh, uh, presentation and continuing with our lecture series. This has been, I, ju I just want to add some little things here, a reminder for everyone. Um, uh, Dibia, uh, uh, final thoughts from uh, Dibia Ochoaja and then Dibia Chedozie. Uh, Monet is no longer here, so then I'll have my final thought. But please, two minutes each, yeah. so that we can. There's other things I want to share before before we close. Two minutes, please. Two minutes, because all we have is uh, eight minutes. So go ahead. Yeah, African spirituality is the oldest spirituality in the world. Everything else are late come up religions. Understand that we believed in God before the European or, or the Arab came to our shores with the Quran or the Bible. We had a conscience, we had a funnel group, we had our own justice system, both civic and spiritual. We had a way, our own medical system, our economic system, we had our own system, we had the same system in our own variety, just like every other people in the world. That's the history of humanity. There is nothing that was brought to Africa that we didn't already have. But in our own definition, in our own understanding, based on our environment and how we relate to our environment and to one another, the European brought nothing to Africa that we didn't already have. So it's very important that we look beyond the microscope and understand this innate fact that we were here mm -hmm. before we came to Africa. Say it again. And Anything negative that you could say about the African people is the fact that we were just a little bit too nice mm -hmm. as a people. We loved mm -hmm. everybody. We trusted everybody. We welcomed mm -hmm. everybody. And it, worked, it, it became detrimental to our survival. But we're still here. Mm -hmm. We're through still here. Slavery, through colonization, the African is still here. There's still 1.2 billion people or more on the continent. And I'm not talking about diaspora in Africa. Yes, They will never get rid of us. We just have yes. to wake up, open our eyes, love ourselves, learn our history That's so right. that we can start a better course for the next generation. You say, oh, Ashe. Yeah, I just want to remind us of what uh, Che Kanta Diop wrote in one of his books. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the African origin of civilization he wrote, say, every idea, every myth with which the black man, the African, is being colonized today, they were founded by his ancestors. Yes. Yes, true. Just like yes. today, raw materials are taken from Africa, re refined and sold back to us at expensive prices. The same, the same process going on. Yes. Then about originality of thought thought is original to me insofar i think my thought to edify humanity and the politics and antics of thought system is that intelligentials of every race of every country are trained to defend the thought system of their people and so if you go to oxford cambridge and all the Western universities, they will never accept your own history. They will debunk it. The onus falls on me as the African scholar to defend my own hobby. That is the yes. antics of politics of scholarship. Thank yes. You. Thank you so much. 
Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, what an exciting show we've had today. I'd like to thank all of you who have joined us from all the different uh, uh, forums, uh, Facebook, YouTube, and uh, however, however you've joined us today, thank you for being here. I also want to remind you to please continue to, to donate to our fundraiser, uh, Dollar Ogele, O-G-E-L-E, -E, dollar sign Ogele. Um, also consider, as we indicated earlier, sponsoring a child, you can do so at the African Women Commission.net or Chasing.org starting next Thursday when all those pictures will be posted. I also would like to ask you to consider registering to become formally a member of, uh, of Chiism. Uh, visit our website, chiism.org, to do so. I'd like to thank you, the DBS. As always, you're always quite exceptional. You feed the mind, you feed the soul. That is our job. That's what we must do. Uh, and the rest of you, I hope that uh, whatever it is we shared today, you're able to add, again, I always use that word, to your repertoire. Not to say that your, uh, what, your, whatever other thoughts you have are not legitimate, but you don't throw the baby out with the dirty bath water. Whatever our ancestors have that we share with you, please take it to heart. It's, we mean well. And I hope you can use it so that you can hopefully not continue to think uh, that uh, we're not good enough. Our thoughts are not good enough. Okay. Remember that in order for anything good to happen to you, you must remember that you must fulfill one small requirement. You must say no to what you don't want in order to make room for what you want. Be open, ready, and willing to receive the blessings of Chineke. Until we meet you again next week, Udo Dirunu. Thank you all. And I'm just going to end the program today with an African song. Uh, uh, I'm going to play uh, music for you. Some of you have heard it, but if you haven't, uh, we just have a few minutes for you to enjoy this music. And um, just so you know, some of this music, you can go to chism.org and you can find them. You can buy them there, actually, if you want to own them. Okay, so here we go. And I'll be right back to close up. Wero bi wayo, wero bi de ma ne to chineke. Wero bi de ma, wero bi wayo, wero bi de ma ne to chineke. Ase na madu ni lende bi no wa ganu he, agano hebe chineke na jo. Abu gini meru melo wa jeri be hero, hebe ya bu chuku tine uwa de ma. Oh,
Yes, indeed. When we praise Chineke, let's do so kindly. Let's honor and respect each other. Dibia, cheers, Dozier. Yeah, guys, here, my brother. Yeah, guys, here, my brother. Yeah, guys, here. Everybody have a wonderful day. If you don't have anything planned to do today, just at least step outside the door and just embrace and just have fun just breathing inhaling and exhaling all the goodness of the universe it's all yours that's your divine inheritance claim it today and so yeah, yeah, yeah. next next sunday mama. We're, gonna okay. bring mama. we're gonna bring the fire we're gonna bring next sunday we'll mama. see you <laughs> yeah. all right Dibia, you, Udi, and uh, uh, Dibia Chiodosi, one second after the show, please. I need to speak to both of you. Yeah, guys, you know. Okay. Yeah, guys, yeah.